Okay, in this video we're going to go over the actual template, template editors and I'm going to show you how they work and the differences between them. They, they're all pretty much basically the same but I wanted to give a little bit of explanation about them. So the, the first thing you'll need to do is after you've got the, the program installed you're going to need to do to create a folder out on your C drive before you get started. So go back to your computer go to C drive and you need to create a templates folder. So depending on what version of Windows you have and how you create a new folder, some Windows versions have a button up here that says new folder. Some of them you can right click out here and go to new and then folder. Or some of them you can go to organize and new folder. Name the folder templates. And like I said, this has to be out on your C drive. You can't put it on any other drive but your C drive. It doesn't take up much room for these, so you know, don't worry about it taking up a lot of room. But it does have to be a templates folder out on your C drive. You know, after you've done that, you can close that out. Now you can start up the main program. Alright, so after the program is loaded, you'll see five different types of templates that you can create. Uh, you have an air push one which is monetized by the air push as the ad mob and you have four other templates that are all monetized with ad mob. Uh, the only difference with the ad air push one is that it's a generic template that you can create just about any kind of app whatever you want to put inside the assets folder as far as the content. The video app template is just like I said it's, my, it, it's customized to really be a, a video app where you show off uh, a list of videos or videos that you created. The business template is just for customized for creating apps for businesses and then the ebook template is mainly set up for creating uh, ebook apps and then you have the niche template which is set up for uh, making apps that go to a niche website that you have. These are all, as far as the editors themselves, they're all pretty much basically the same. Um, you just click whichever one you want to start with. We'll start with, say, the ebook one here. Let's just do it. You click the icon, it'll load up the editor. And you got two steps to each one of these templates. You got a step one where you actually go through the question answer phase to determine what your uh, app is about then you have a step two where you finalize the template so the first thing you want to do is click the step one build the template and when the editor loads up it, it it like I said it's mostly it's all question and answer it gives you the question up here what you need to put in here as far as the answers and then there's some helpful hints down here at the very bottom that tells you what what the question is all about and I tried to give examples of an answer that you would put there. I'm just going to go with these default example answers here so we can go through this one pretty quick. It's asking me to enter the full name of the app and it has to be less than 30 characters and that's because of Google Play Store you're only allowed 30 characters in the the app title name so you try to you won't try to keep that to 30 characters and you click the next button and it's a short description this short description should be between anywhere from 50 to 100 words 75 to 100 is the average this is just a short description that goes inside the app itself this doesn't get published anywhere, it's just inside the app itself. Now you want to enter the name of your business here, all lowercase, 8 to 12 characters maximum. Now this, what this is all about right here is part of the package name uh, in the PDF that I included with this package of uh, called the anatomy of a package name 
explains the different parts of what a package name is all about. Basically, you're going to be creating apps and you're going to be calling them with, they're going to be tagged with your name and then whatever the actual app name is. So you need to pick a name here that you know helps identify you. Most people pick either some variation of their name or their business name or whatever here. I'm going to put just like I said just the examples here. I'm going to type in Acme Apps. Business name is not Acme Apps but just like I said this is just an example. And this is where you actually put the actual app name that is that is will be stored in the Google Play Store so um, this also has to be all lowercase and it's you know, you're not really limited to 8 to 12 characters but you know you want to try to keep it as short as you can so if you can keep it between 8 and 12 characters that's great you don't even have to be 8 characters it can be 3 characters I guess if you wanted it to be but uh, just give it some sort of a, a good name here And click the next button. And they're here to ask you if you want to enable ad mob ads. Now I made these templates where you could disable the ads in them if you wanted to be, make paid apps. And while we're on that topic, let me tell you that if you're gonna if you're gonna create uh, paid apps, you can't have ads in them. And by that I mean you can't have ads from like ad mob or from air push or any of the other. Uh, ad network you can have your own links in your apps to products that you sell or uh, affiliate products inside the app but you can't have ads that appear as banners or text or whatever so anyway you choose whether you want to enable the ad mob ads or not and I'm going to go ahead and say yes I want ad mob ads in this one now it asks you for the publisher ID for this app and if you've published any apps uh, to add mob you know what this is asking you about it's, it's basically when you set up your app inside of add mob or air push either one they give you an app ID that you uh, use to put inside your app so that when the ads are displayed it, it gets credited to your app for add mob they're usually start out with some number and or some letter and then a bunch of numbers and another letter usually and it can be a bunch of letters too and then there's some numbers but it generally looks something like that right there let's click the next button now this next question is do you want the slider tab to be on the bottom of the screen or not if you select yes it'll put the slider the slider menu on the bottom of the screen and that's okay if you're creating an app that's going to be mainly used on the, the larger screen smartphones or the uh, tablets. I generally like to keep them over on the side so if you select no, what it does is it puts the this menu slider over on the right hand side of the screen. And I, I generally like to keep it that way. That way if, it's, if it would happen to be a smartphone, a small screen smartphone, that the menu is easy to get to. Either way, you know, it, it doesn't take that much room because the, the slider is collapsible. It's just a little tiny arrow thing that they click on or tap on, rather, to uh, expand the, the menu. So, you know, it doesn't get in the way either way. It's just I, I prefer it to be on the side just in case it is a small screen smartphone that would be using the app that the, the menu would be easier for them to use. So I always select no on that to put the you select no it puts the slider menu over on the right hand side of the screen which is what I generally like to do and of course this is an ebook app so it's asking if I want if I have a fake Facebook fan page I want to link to and I'm gonna say yes and take the default answer that it gives here and it says enter a pro Twitter profile URL and of course I'm just gonna take the default here on that as well and then it wants to know if I wants to enter a YouTube channel URL Okay, so that's the last question on this ebook app. Like I said, most all of them ask about these same questions. Some of them are a little different, the questions that they ask, especially the business app, it asks a different set of questions. And the niche app asks, asks a different set of questions. But they basically ask the same type. And like I said, the, the questions up here, where I or was a default answer I could give, I put in here just to help you get started. 
but every one of them also has a description down here of what kind of answer it's looking for. Finally, just after you've got through all the questions, just click finish. This is where it comes in that, that templates folder you created. You want you to select a, a folder to create uh, your edited version of the templates. So you're going to need to go to the C drive and then down to that templates folder and select it. And then just click OK. And what it's doing at this point is generating all of the template files for you. And then at the end it gives you an option of saving this if you want to. It's up to you if you want to save it or not. If you do save it, if you want to go back later through through setting up this app again, say you want to do updates to it, you can load this save file and it answers all, all the questions for you ahead of time. You just have to go in there and change the ones where you need to change. I'm not going to save this one, but if you want to save it, just click yes, then it'll ask you where you want to save the save file. Okay, when it exits, it'll come back out to the, the, the little dashboard where you got the two steps. The second part is to click step two to finalize the template. Now, if you didn't save it in the templates folder, like I told you on the C colon slash templates folder, you'll get an error here. If you did save it there, you'll see this little screen pop up and go away. What it's basically doing there is it's putting the final customizations to the template so that it will be ready for you to import into uh, Eclipse. You just close this out and we go back to the, the main dashboard again. And if you have any problems with any of this, you can click this help button down here and it takes you to all the videos that I've made and the documents that, the, the documents that I've created too to help you understand how these templates work and how creating these apps work. That's basically it on the templates and how they work. They're fairly simple. Like I said, every one of them are just about the same. The air push one is just a little different than the, it's generic. Um, basically, what you'd want to do if you don't want, if you want to create paid apps, but you don't want ads in, you'd want to use any one of these four right here. If you want to create an ad where you want to monetize it with air push, you would use this one. Later on, I'll make some other templates and add to these later, but for now, this, this should get you a long way having these five different types that you can create here. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one when we actually go into importing the templates that you just created into Eclipse.